It feels like this week was when it changed for Britain. Just seven days ago, life was almost normal. Now, many are wondering when life on these islands will be normal again. Yesterday, the government, acting on scientific advice, chose not to impose draconian restrictions on Britain's liberties. But the response is accelerating. Newsnight understands that the government intends mass gatherings will be banned from next weekend, with new legislation to broaden existing powers brought forward next week. Hints that an acceleration in their response to COVID came earlier in the day when the Prime Minister unexpectedly announced that May's local and mayoral elections will be postponed for a whole year. They had previously insisted they would go ahead. There is no precedent for such a long delay in peacetime. Some opposition leaders fear the public might be confused. It's a surprisingly rapid change from yesterday's position and there is a slight danger that the government doesn't look like it's fully in control because of that. Nevertheless, um, we've seen those people who host sporting events, Premier League clubs, uh, motor racing, taking their own decisions. And it does look a little bit like governments playing catch up with the rest of uh, British society. The government says that this isn't about science, but public services. That gatherings like big sporting events strain them too much. But to some extent, sporting bodies and others had acted already. English and Scots football fixtures cancelled early on today, as were a suite of other sporting events. The London Marathon postponed till October. Big rugby Six Nations events gone too. And whilst government is keeping all schools open, for now, some higher education institutions are taking matters into their own hands. Newsnight understands at least 17 universities across the country have decided to cancel exams or lectures or move entirely to online learning. And as commutes emptied, businesses began to feel the malaise. The latest figures for the hospitality sector, restaurants and leisure are showing sharp declines across the UK. This, the daily, year-on-year -year percentage decline in footfall in every region. It started off as a London problem and over the course of the week diffused across the country, suppressing footfall on some days by 35% or more. We're seeing people acting on their own initiative and companies acting ahead of government advice. So travel bans, restrictions on meetings, that's all happening. People are choosing to work from home. Regardless of what the government advice is, social distancing is already happening and it's having a direct hit on business income as a result. And that's what's driving the, the squeeze and the cash flow crisis in the hospitality sector. For industries on the front line, those which have been exposed from the very start of this pandemic, like aviation, things are worse still. Newsnight has seen a transcript of a video message sent from British Airways Chief Executive Alex Cruz to his employees today. In it, he says that the COVID-19 crisis is a crisis of global proportions like no other that we have known. He says that for the aviation industry, it's worse than SARS, worse than the 2008 financial crisis, even worse than 9-11, and that as a result, we can no longer sustain our current level of employment and jobs will be lost. In other words, even for our most well-known and most solvent global brands, they will be no more immune from coronavirus than their customers. Newsnight has been told that COVID-19 is accelerating quickly. Britain is changing almost as fast. We can't know when or even if things will stop looking quite so unfamiliar. And Lewis Goodall joins us now. And Lewis, what is the latest we're hearing about this government decision? So, uh, Katie, we were saying in the report there, Newsnight understands that there uh, will be uh, emergency legislation brought forward uh, next week, that that legislation will contain uh, new provisions, like, as we were discussing there, uh, a ban on gatherings of more than uh, 500 uh, people. The government actually potentially has the power to do that already, but this will augment the uh, power that it already has. And the Times as well reporting uh, this evening that there uh, will be other provisions, power to detain infectious people, uh, that uh, councils will be empowered to uh, change standards in care homes to deal with staff shortages, uh, that they'll be able to detain vehicles, close ports, speed up cremations, burials. And of course, if we really start to think about what this will uh, entail, this, this might not be for a short period. We could see big public events like Wimbledon, Glastonbury, Royal Ascot, the Grand National, 
um, all postponed life starting to look very different indeed. Now, some are saying that this is a U-turn from the government. It's certainly the Telegraph have described it uh, as that. We heard Ed Davey alluding to that there in my report. Certainly true to say that Boris Johnson uh, didn't seem particularly keen on the idea of, of banning uh, mass uh, gatherings yesterday. He said he wouldn't be taking the same approach Nicola Sturgeon uh, was doing. I think the government... Uh, would say that this was all, uh, certainly the, the plan has always been that this has always been at their disposal. It was just a question of doing it at the right time. Uh, as I was saying there, the government, I think others think that this uh, virus really is accelerating quickly and therefore that their response has to be proportionate to that acceleration.